Hello, I'm Dr. Martin Bergman reporting to you from RWCS in beautiful Maui. Uh, I'm here on behalf of Room Now and I'm here discussing a fascinating poster that is, was presented here by Dr. Tamara Dahan. And I'd like to have her explain this. Why don't you tell us what we have here and then let's see what we can find out that is potentially interesting and educational for others. So doctor, please. Hello, my name is Tamara DeHan, and I'm a first year fellow from All of You UCLA, and I'm here to present an interesting case. Um, so I have a patient who's a 50 year old male who had no previous past medical history, and he presented with um, a few days of right eye uh, blurry vision that was painless. Um, he additionally told us that he had a rash over the lower extremities, and he'd been feeling feverish and having myalgias for the last few months. Additionally, he told us that he had um, some knee swelling on the left side, and maybe an episode of testicular swelling um, and then just a few days prior to his presentation he had developed acute right upper extremity weakness and numbness. Um, so um, on exam he was found to have papilledema in the bilateral eyes right greater than left. Um, additionally he was found to have four out of five muscle strength in the right upper extremity with decreased sensation. Um, as a result we went ahead and imaged him. We got an MRI with contrast of his brain and it showed that he had um, multiple subacute um, infarcts in the left parietal region that you can see here on the imaging, these hyperintense lesions here um, with corresponding hypointense lesions on the alternative sequences. Um, so he was basically presenting with a subacute stroke. So we did a big workup. Initially the LP showed um, multiple WBCs of 56 um, with a lymphocytic predominance of 53%. He had a low glucose and as well as an elevated protein. Um, the culture was negative, um, but he was also found to have oligoclonal bands and an elevated IgG synthesis rate. Um, so uh, we went ahead and did some room labs. Um, an ANA was negative, but his DSDNA titer was highly positive, 1 to 640. Um, the rest of the subserologies were negative, so SSASSB, Smith RNP were both negative. Additionally, we have APS labs that were negative, an ANCA that was negative, as well as a RF and a CCP. Um, we went ahead, he also presented with a rash, so we bi biopsied the lower extremity rash that appeared petechial in nature, and you can see a picture of it right here, and that confirmed leukocytoclastic vasculitis, but no um, immunoglobulin deposition on immunofluorescence. Um, so he additionally had an isolated low C4. So we started to become very concerned for the possibility of a lupus um, associated CNS vasculitis based off of a high DSDNA titer, a history of left knee swelling, um, an isolated low C4, and then multiple subacute infarcts. As a result, we decided to pulse him because he had come in, you know, with a fairly acute presentation of stroke, um, and he was a young man with no other past medical history. So we gave him a pulse dose of steroids, and we decided to give him a dose of cytoxan. Um, and uh, later on, blood cultures that had been previously documented as negative um, uh, later grew out some gram-negative rods and were speciated as brucella off of PCR. Um, as a result, infectious disease was consulted and then he was later found to have very elevated uh, brucella titers in the serum, IgG and IgM. And um, altogether, it ended up giving him a diagnosis of uh, acute brucellosis and neurobrucellosis, um, which was very interesting, which ended up becoming a mimicker of what we thought was um, uh, lupus-associated CNS vasculitis. So clearly we tapered off the steroids, no more cytoxin for him, he got treated appropriately for his brucella and um, he did much better. He completely resolved the infection and is doing very well now and no additional neurologic symptoms. So I have to say I would have fallen into the same trap had I had this patient in front of me you're looking at lupus, but there, I think there's some pearls here, and I think uh, we've discussed this, but I think one of the pearls that you mentioned is the ANA negativity and the DNA positivity. So why don't you comment a little bit more on that? So I think it's always very important to, when you're evaluating for lupus, if someone's ANA negative, you really have to have a high suspicion that you may not be dealing with lupus um, because that is such a rare presentation of lupus. Uh, additionally, a really high DSDNA titer may be a false positive. And one thing that we postulated in this poster is that if you have brucellosis, that may be a, a, a potential cause for a falsely positive DSDNA titer. And then anytime you're evaluating someone for CNS vasculitis, um, you really have to 
look for infections as possible mimickers and then um, especially if someone co is coming from an endemic area you should screen them with brucella serum antibodies which is something we did for him and then when we went back to him and talked to him it, he told us that he was eating unpasteurized cheese from his home country in Mexico um, so that sort of really clinched the diagnosis for us so very important to keep in mind when you're evaluating CNS vasculitis. So Dr. Dehan, thank you for that fascinating presentation. And as you can see, uh, on behalf of Room Now, we're having a wonderful time here in Maui, but it's not only just beautiful, but we also have incredible education here. So thank you again for your presentation. You're welcome.